Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Finger on the Pulse. I'm Chelsea Gelinas, and this is my partner, Carrie Gatto. And today's guest is designer Kelly Weber. Hi. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So, tell us a little bit about how you got into staging. Okay. And so. Design. Uh, um, so many things. Um, so I work for New England Staging and Interiors. And I got into it, it's, it's so hard to say. Um, it, you know, I started when I was young, I worked in um, furniture showrooms. And then I sort of plateaued that. Um, I was a real estate agent myself. Interesting. This was 2004 to 2006. Wow. Um, I always wanted to stay and be in design, but I was kind of my younger years hopping around um, doing everything different with the home. And so those uh, between the furniture showrooms and the real estate, it um, made me uniquely qualified uh, for home staging. And um, I first started my home staging career with a, a different firm that's no longer around now um, before I joined New England Staging and Interiors two years ago. So people ask me how long I've been doing this. I say about six years consecutively. So that doesn't count like the real estate agents, and, you know, and the furniture show. Seems like such a perfect background. Yeah. To get into what you yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. Really great. Yeah. Thank you. So what um what areas do you cover? Does do you go all over New England or are you just Massachusetts? Yep. So all over New England. Um. So I mean, me personally, I usually cover just north of Boston, and you know, all of southern Massachusetts into Rhode Island, um, but any territory in New England, you know, we can cover. I have two business partners. Um, so the three of us can really spread out. That's so, great. Yeah, it's great. get around. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is great. Are you one of the owners of your company? Um, I'm not the owner. Okay. Stacy is. Um, she's mm -hmm. the proprietor of our brand. She started New England Staging and Interiors about nine years ago, um, and I was just able to join. We have a great relationship, and um, so it's Stacy, Jen, and myself. Perfect. So yeah, yeah. And what's the difference, Kelly, between staging and interior design? Ah, oh, that's a question a lot of people ask me. Thank you for asking it. Um, are you familiar with the term merchandising? Mm-hmm. Yep. So home staging was a phrase coined for the real estate industry, but in reality, it is just merchandising properties. Okay. So when you think of, you know, when you say merchandising, a lot of people think of retailers because a store gets merchandised and there's a lot of effort that goes into um, floor planning, color, you know, placement. So that mm -hmm. sort of same concepts in, in a general merchandising, you know, area um, applies to home staging. So it's about highlighting key features of the home okay. mm -hmm. um, for the sale, appealing to a certain buyer demographic, whereas design, mm -hmm. interior design, is you know, custom decorating, making things look pretty based on what someone wants that they're living there. Right. So it's two totally different set of goals. Right. right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Thank so, you for mm -hmm. clarifying that. Yeah. How does this, does this hot market affect your industry at all or does it have any bearing on that? It sure does. Yeah. It sure does. It keeps you busy, I'm sure. <laughs> it does. Um, in a market that's performing well, people feel that there is less of a need for professional staging, mm -hmm. but I would say that it sort of flops where... It almost seems more important. Right. It, it sort of depends. I find um, some of the lower price points sort of, you know, leaving the cost of staging on the table because, you know, things are selling faster, but it's mm -hmm. more important in higher price points, investment properties, mm -hmm. luxury properties, because then the competition is that much greater. Right. So, um, just keeps me busy all the time. Uh, you know, just like you're an agent, you know mm -hmm. different times. It's very cyclical. Right. Um, as is what I do in the staging side, which is why I do design too. So it sort of fills it all in. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. staging, I think, is so interesting because it's sort of a mix of art and business. You know, True. you're sprucing up the space and also, you know, padding your bottom line. So it's um, a lot about getting a return on investment. Mm. Right. Yeah. Do you have any um, research or figures on what the ROI is, return on investment for staging? The return on investment, not specifically, because there are so many levels of staging. Got it. 
um, just to branch off of that question really quickly, is I think so many people expect that like staging's, you know, one wand, like there's one yeah. solution. Okay. There's not. There's okay. many levels of staging based on what a client wants to invest in, which then, to go back to your question, will affect the return on investment. Do you have sure. okay. $300? Do you have $5,000? Do you have 10? And okay. where is that going to hit? So a good statistic I have is typically a staged home, even at the various levels, will sell for 8 to 10% more. Okay. Wow. So when we look at a property, that is amazing. based on what they're willing to invest, we can sort of figure that out. Um, it's also important to know that staged homes sell about 78% faster. That's a national average. It's different per territory, so I'll, I'll give you national averages here. That's huge. And yeah. so when you're talking about ROI, carrying costs factor in. Right. So it's not one clear formula. And especially in such a hot market like we're experiencing right now, yeah. it's all about selling, you know, quickly to uh -huh. get your top right. dollar because you right. get all that activity up front. Right, right. So that's well, I know, meaningful. like the two of you and your team, you're you're really good at pricing it and going over asking. So that's such a good strategy when someone yeah. invests in staging. Yeah. You want to create that buzz, and right. you know to to drive that up. No, I want it. No, I want it. You know, so, yeah. Buyers and, I, and everybody are so visual. Yeah. You know? So making that first impression, that impact, I think is so important. Right. And what do they say? I think I've, I've heard, I don't know if this is really true, but that a person will make their opinion on a home within 30 seconds. I'm sure. Of walking yeah. in. First impressions are huge. So a lot of what I do is you know, playing up the positive, downgrading any potential negatives or fixing the negatives and turning those around. So, yeah. excellent. Well, speaking of visuals, you brought some to show us some before and yes. afters. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about, about these as we go through? Yeah. So, I did bring a couple just to make sure they're in the right order here. Um, so one of the first projects I brought was this one. We'll call it Chestnut Street. Mm -hmm. um, this was a really fun project to work on. And, and you know, I'm glad you asked the ROI question mm -hmm. because for this particular client, they were willing to invest in some redecorating, if you will, bringing in some furnishings. Okay. But they didn't, they couldn't go as far as, you know, repainting. Okay. So we did a lot of playing with what they had eliminating a lot of the clutter. Um, so he, you're looking at some before and afters, which I'm sure the audience will see better. Um, but you can see here with the, the living room, this was the before and this is the after. This is actually the great room. And this is, this is true for most people. They tend to push their furniture against the walls and into the corners, right. which is not always a great use of space. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's like it's not that different because in the picture you're looking at the windows, but when you really look at what I'm saying, so we switched some rugs around. I and love that rug. Yeah, it so, really pops. So for the final one, we really brought good. in an appropriate size rug, something that popped. We brought all the furniture in so that we could really generate a focal point around the selling features of the home, the windows, the, windows. the windows. fireplace. Yeah. You know, there were some, as far as a selling feature, there were some beefy um, add-ons that went with their audio-visual components. So the staging actually highlighted all of that. Same okay. thing in this living room in the before photo. Um, they never really knew how to use this room because the living room was off-center. Okay. So they just kind of put a bunch of things all around and it was never really Never really a useful space. Yeah. So I brought in appropriately scaled furniture, again, centered around the fireplace. There was, um, what you can't see in the image is there, there was a built-in bar area, you know, with a wet sink and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so it really <clears throat> spoke to, oh, this is where, you know, we could have friends over and we could have a beverage and all sit down and face each other and yeah, talk. Yeah, you can and really it, visualize it as an, a space to entertain in. Right. So this, mm -hmm. this was really fun to work with because I did mix some of what the client had with okay. a few pieces. That's great. And I think in, in this image, in the Eden kitchen area, it made a huge impact because they never knew how to treat it. And they just had sort of an ugly table and ugly chairs. <laughs> um, I brightened it all up. 
um, and it really complemented. There was a white kitchen, so I used the white chairs, and it made oh, it. That makes so much it sense. married the whole space. So that was one really fun project. It, you know, it had an awkward layout. So when we talk about mm -hmm. levels of staging and and you know how far a client is willing to go. There are solutions if you're not willing to do 100. percent Okay. Um, and this sold, I think, in. Um, this was a luxury property, so they usually have a higher days on mar market, but it sold under 90 days. Oh, that's um, really good. Because before I staged it, it sat on the market for a year. Oh, wow. Wow. So, and then it sold in 90 days. And it sold in under 90 days. There's your proof right there. Yeah. That's a great story. That's amazing. So it's one of the reasons I love. I just happen to love the shots as well of the house. It's sort of like a farmhouse, but it's a little contemporary, a little transitional. So. Okay. I think it's so important for people to know that there are levels. Because I think a lot of people have it Huge. in their head that... I can't afford to stage my whole house. Right. You know, so it's important to know that right. we can that you can take pieces that they already have and make those work and right. you can work with people on all kinds of levels. I think coming into today, knowing I was gonna sit down with you both, that was probably the biggest message that I wanted to deliver. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously people see shows on different networks and it's like, oh staging, what does staging cost? Right. And then my my answer to that is what are you willing to spend? Okay. You know, because I think still people in New England particularly, because we're sort of old blood here, we're conservative. Yeah. So we have a hard time thinking, oh, there's levels. But isn't there one solution? Can't you just come in and my house is staged? You know, right. it's it's furniture, it's paint, it could be renovation, it could be, you know, okay. repair. So there are so many levels. And ultimately, the end of what I do is bringing in prettier furniture, art, accessories, things like that for the photo shoots and for the showings. So, you know, right, there's right. so many levels, so. So when you first meet with a client, you ask them what their budget is that they're willing to spend. I and do. And you go from there. Right, okay. and most people don't have one. So I throw out Because they don't really know. Because they don't really know. Right. Mm -hmm. So then that allows me to get in that conversation of, this is what I think you need. You know, this is 100%. Can we work backwards? So there's a lot of upfront sort of working with the homeowner, and I always work with the agent as well as part of it. Uh, make sure my staging lines up with your marketing plan. So we're like a team yeah. um, when I stage a property. That's so, great. yeah. So that was that one. You can definitely see how you warmed up those spaces and made yeah. it so much more inviting. I mean, it just even just the white chairs, it just makes the room look so much bigger. It yeah. does. And brighter. So yeah. It looks so dark before. Right. Of course, before, you know, photos aren't as or probably aren't professional either, but still, yeah, it was kind of drabby. Yeah. That's my technical terminology. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this one, it was another of the same. This was on, uh, we'll call this Project Glen, because um, I can't remember if it was Glen Road or Glen Street. <laughs> so this was another thing where it was a very lived-in home. They had young mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. They were moving to, you know, their upgrade home. So they used their formal living room, which was gorgeous, as the playroom. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. So um, I just turned it around. I made them clean all that up and e evacuate the children <laughs> um, and brought in some furniture, mixed it with this uh, sofa they already had. This was also the first room you walked in the door and that, that room was to the right. So it was really super important right. that that looked One of the first things you see. good. I love yeah. the lights that oh you Oh my used. gosh, I, I was just gonna say that chandelier yeah. is gorgeous. Did you I, put that in? I didn't put that in. Um, that was the homeowners, but that was okay. one of the highlights. Mm -hmm. So when they had sort of this like undone foyer with the formal living room off to the right that they used as a kid's playroom, it was not doing anything to this gorgeous light fixture right. that I'm pretty sure the homeowner took with them to their new house. Um, that's why I included that image because I wanted you to see that there's a you know, there's a reason I played up this foyer right. in particular. Right. And then the foyer led into um, the family room. Okay. So it was important to have like that solid visual. Visual, As you can see in the before you walk in the door, you're looking at this dark right. love seat that's blocking the windows. Mm -hmm. So I pulled the furniture off the wall, nixed the love seat, brought in two chairs that were a little more fluid, created that nice visual all the way down. Um, tried to do some high-low, you probably can't see this from the image, to get people looking up, you know, focusing mm -hmm. on the sort of grand entrance, um, and just a super fun project. 
So you were saying business. before about um, appealing to the buyer demographic. Yeah. Is that different depending on the home? Absolutely. Okay. It's probably the biggest area that I work with a real estate agent on. Mm. Um, you know, because I've, I have had some experience in real estate and I've been doing it so long, I can make my own assumptions. But that's one of my first questions to the agent who's listing the property is, what's your buyer demographic for this property? Okay. Is it specific and narrow? Is it broad? Um, because the furniture and the layouts are going to be very different depending right. on the, I mean, think of how different a home would be for a family versus, you know, maybe it's just a couple or maybe it's a downsizer. Right. Right. So. For sure. Yeah. It's all Excellent. appropriate to that. Yeah. It's great. So. Um, and these pictures look very contemporary so far. Is that typically what you're going for? Is, is that, again, dependent on the property? Yeah, I mean, most of the time, well, in the first set of images on the Chestnut House, they did have a little bit of a country spin. Mm. But for the most part, like if you're not painting, you were trying to make things look newer. Right. So even if it is sort of a country home, it's definitely going to be layered with, you know, shiny newer things just right. to give the buyer that feeling that it's, it's fresh. fresh and new. Yeah. Okay. Makes yeah. Sense. It's like trying to evoke that emotion, you know, that perception. So. Um, so I tried to mix a few contemporary and then I did bring some modern images here of a property on um, Mass Ave. This sold in about, I want to say 10 days. Is this sounds, in Cambridge? Sounds about right. <laughs> um, no, this is on Mass Ave in Boston near the okay. Boston Medical. Okay. So I don't think that's quite Cambridge yet. Okay. Um, it was a garden unit, so it was small. And probably dark. Dark. Um, it had some really cool features that just weren't highlighted. So the building itself was a brownstone, mm -hmm. but it was one of the brownstones that had the hole in the middle. So this garden unit not only got um, a patio at street level, but they got this private, probably like 10 by 10 enclosure because they were at the bottom of the hole. Wow. Um, so they Very did unique. have some great natural light, but what was a problem is, yeah, People were feeling it was dark. It was also a situation, I'm sure you see this in the Somerville area where both bedrooms are relatively the same size. So it's like, which is the master? Right. Um, so we played up to the demographic as far as the buyer in this Mass Ave property being, you know, probably a younger couple, no children, right. you know, probably their first purchase. Right. You know, probably someone who just graduated in one of the colleges. So we did something a little more modern and fun and showed how the layout can really, you know, really work. So that was, I really like that yeah, project. I love that artwork. Yeah, just something fun with the lady going, shh, you know, yeah. over the bed. <laughs> so a little different yeah. from what I normally do, um, but it was appropriate for Definitely. the listing. Yeah. It really shows the space, too, and how, how you can make it functional. Yeah. Even though it's smaller. Right. And it looks very bright. It does. It was very bright, yeah, and we played up and, you know, these images weren't great to they translate on TV, but that little hole okay. in the, the it was a court, let's call it the courtyard, yep. um, I brought in a series of fresh plants that the realtor took care of throughout the listing process, which wasn't very long. <laughs> so, um, and I did the same thing on the patio. So when you were actually in the property, as your sight line looked through each of the windows, instead of maybe being distracted by the street level reality of cars being parked. I used bright, bushy plants. plants. So it really gave a sense of privacy, of continuity. What a great idea. Yeah. And they, you know, whenever I use fresh plants, that they just get to keep them. I don't take them. Oh, it's not cool. a prop. I don't I don't take them back to my staging <laughs> yeah. house after. So, so that that was really it's a nice bonus. Yeah. That was a nice bonus. Yeah. But it it really, really helped. Especially where the hole in the, the building was, you know, a slider and four walls, you know. So we had right. really fun colors. I used like a yellow off of the artwork and orange and red, so. Oh, pretty. Yeah, it was fun, fun, wow. so. But um, the last set of photos, just two simple images, just to kind of give a variety. Um, the reason I included this one um, is I think I wanted to say staging's not always for selling. Interesting. So, and I've done this um, several times in my career because it just comes up. 
Hmm. But this particular Boston um, unit, there were, so I work with agents all over, mm -hmm. and an agent that I work with regularly had a client that was moving from California. They were here temp to perm for, um, for a working contract, and they didn't want to ship all of their furniture from California. So the agent, just knowing me and knowing what I was capable of for listings, said, could you help these guys out? I said, of course I can. And so we basically, I staged their house and they moved into it. Um, and at the six months, at the end of their six months, they decided to stay and now I'm actually designing their house. Um, so okay. I mean, I know most of the time staging is for real estate, but I wanted to point out that, you know, as agents, stagers have a lot more sort of resources for, for you as agents than you could probably think of. That's great. Um, and where it keeps happening to me, I thought it was worth mentioning. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. definitely unique, not something that you would typically think of when you think of staging. Right. You I just mean, it's automatically go to oh selling. For, for selling purposes. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and for what we're talking about today, it's really all about um, you know the selling and you know this type of staging is more on the da design side of my business, um, but it's more it's the same resources, mm -hmm. and as an agent, you know it's just another value add Absolutely. that you can have. So you know, um, so that's why I brought some images of that because there are we talked about levels. Right. <laughs> this is a level that, yeah. you know, some people may not think of in, in a diverse, culturally diverse area such as Boston. Mm -hmm. um, I think if people knew about this more, yeah, you know, it could help. It's great that you have that kind of flexibility to work with a consumer, you know, obtain their goals right. on their budget. Right. Yeah. Right. And because at the same time, if these clients decided not to stay, Right. Basically, their staging plan was already in place right. for a quick okay. sale. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it was very full circle. So it made sense, made yes. perfect sense. Right, right. That's great. Yeah, it was like one-stop shopping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Do you work a lot with developers? I have. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've worked a lot with everybody at this point. <laughs> um, That's great. Yes, more a few years ago, I did a lot more with developers in like the Brookline area. It seemed mm. like you know, million dollar home after million dollar home was going up and I think they've exhausted some of the, the land there, at least mm -hmm. for right now. But um, not only would I stage their properties at completion, but mm -hmm. I can consult on, you know, layouts, uh, lighting plans, obviously paint, oh, wow. hardware, um, you know, bathroom mirrors. Right. Um, I, I'm sure you as agents, you there, there's sort of this builder grade level Right. of things that everybody sees at the big box retailers. Right. And um, what I would do is just help them step up their game. It doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily need to cost more. themselves. Yes. Yeah. Because merchandising, now they're taking that part off of, you know, okay, so they're usually guys. Right. <laughs> and so they're just, you know, buy what's easy. Right. Um, but they really were stepping up their game, getting me involved. Like I said, not sure. necessarily costing them anymore. Just mm -hmm. finding better um, things to use. Helping top dollar. Yes. It really makes a difference what finishes you put in and what's going to appeal to right. the most amount of people. Right. And of course, if you get into larger projects, I mean, you know, I, ref I reference single family luxury homes in Brookline, but if you were working in a multi-unit condo development, you know, typically you're going to stage a model. Right. But then are they all identical floor plans? Right. You know, and then you get volume discounts on, you know, things like lighting that, you know, I might have better oh, resources okay. than they do. Yeah. Um, on the reverse of that, I know three families are big around the Somerville mm -hmm. territory, mm -hmm. which I know can really stump developers because they're not, ever, you know, it might be three units, but they're not identical. Mm -hmm. So then they're left thinking, do I do all the same kitchen? Do I do all the same baths in each one, even though they're not the same layout? Yeah. Um, so really getting me involved at the beginning can really start a even better successful, you know, marketing, merchandising, home staging plan. So zeroing in on who's the perfect buyer for each unit, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. During the design phase, mm. which, you know, most of them don't think about that at that time. Yeah. Necessarily. 
you know, so it's it's great to have that all come in. And then again, then they get their top dollar and they're meeting right. their profit margin, so they're happy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the yeah. developers are all about making money, you know, they're right. doing it as a business. Right. And they do seem to always stage, so therefore, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, as a residential seller, mm -hmm. you, you got to look at that and think, okay, there's a reason the developers are doing it. Right. Right. So Right. We should do it too. And it's, it's a good, good for, business decision. Yeah, and it's good for the buyer because if you bring a buyer mm. to one of their units, don't you want them to be really excited that this unit has something a little more special than Absolutely. everything else that sort of had the standard? Especially if you only have 30 seconds to, to sell them on <laughs> right. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I think I read that somewhere and it stuck with me, but I'm I sure there's that's real truth. Probably, yeah, yeah, that seems, yeah. seems right. I'm sure, it probably. I mean, you can tell even when you see a new listing online, you know, it has right. that look. Yep. It's been staged, it's been photographed the right way, mm -hmm. and you can just tell it's going to fly. Right. And I think Multiple that's, offers. now that we're in such a digital age, Right. I mean, I said I was doing this for six consecutive years, and the game has really changed from year one to now because the technology is just that much greater. Everyone's on their phones. Yep. People are probably doing drive-bys more because they have access to the address and the photos. So it's all, it's all part of it. You know, it needs to be perfect or else they're not even going to look at it, right, if the right. images don't look good. So. Absolutely. Especially when they're... The listing around the block is staged and looks good. They're going to go to that one first. So. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm asking you, like, you're right, your buyers too. Yeah. yeah. It absolutely. is. Oh, yeah. It's simple but true. I mean, people, again, are just so visual and, and emotional too when it comes to home buying. Yeah. I'm part therapist, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Excellent>. absolutely. <laughs> Not college trained or anything. <laughs> just uh, can help. <laughs> I have a degree in psychology, and it comes in handy. Yeah, so we're a good team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's definitely some emotions that right. fly. Right. From a listing, we All can right. help them emotionally detach, stop thinking of that's it. That's a big part of it. Yeah, it's not their home anymore. It's now a product that's right. for sale. Yeah. That can be tough. Yeah, yeah. But it's fun. I think I, I make it fun. You know, most people tell me, I had no idea what to expect, and then you came in, and, you know, you made it look, you know, you did things that... I always get this. I wish I had you come before I sold. Yeah. You know? And that's now they wish they could stay, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, no, it's not even if they could wish they could stay. It's okay. just that I may have helped them make better use of their living areas. Yeah. Or, you know, so, and, and that was my springboard into the design world because then we could you do my new oh, house? Oh, really? Yeah. So, and so you were a stager before yes. you were a designer. Right. Okay. Right. Right, yeah. Cool. So by, by referrals, which is great. So that means Absolutely. people. That's way to do business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I got it. I don't know. <laughs> so do you have um you have an online portfolio that people can check out? I do. I do. They can go right to um, my website. It's www. N is in new. E is in England. Mm -hmm. Staging dot com. Great. Um, there's a portfolio there. Obviously, everyone uses House. Right. Um, so uh, I would say on I was our website, uh, myself, Stacy, and Jen are all highlighted um, because it is the three of us. Mm -hmm. But if they want to see more of my work personally, they can check out Hows. And I, you know, even with Facebook, I try and throw some things up there. I'm easy to find because I'm Kelly with an I. That's true. <laughs> so you know, there's no if if you get the spelling right, I come right up. So <laughs> thanks, Ma. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. She did that for business purposes. I, I think assume. so. I think you know she was a forward thinker for, for me. Great. Um, but yeah. So what would you say, just quickly, if you had to differentiate yourself from other designers, what would you say is really what makes you different? Um, Your unique selling proposition. Yeah. Um, I find that I really am, and I hate to use this word, custom, because custom sounds expensive. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> it does, right? I don't yeah. know. I, but I really am. I think, you know, there's a lot of great stages out there that I know, um, but everyone has a niche. So some people do really great in just vacant, some do great just consulting. Okay. Um, but I kind of mm -hmm. cover, I can cover it all. And I think that is because of my background. 
Um, so I, I, I would just encourage people to, you know, contact me and then, you know, we could take it from there. But custom being, I don't have one approach. I don't have that magic wand mm -hmm. for all the properties. Um, every property is different, as you know. Right. Um, so I really go in. I work a lot with the agents, like I said at the beginning, to really focus on the successful sale. And I think just your background in itself is sort of your unique selling proposition yeah. just because you've done it from the sales side, right. having been an agent. So you understand that whole process yes, from beginning to end, how it works. So I think right. that's very unique in itself. Right. And I would think that would be important to a client that you're working with to stage a property for sale. Yeah. De I so mean, I think that's great. That's definitely. Really I mean, another unique thing, I mean, I feel like, you know, I'm a leader in the staging industry. I've been speaking about staging for, for years. Um, um, I lead uh, the Real Estate Staging Association in Massachusetts, which is, you know, a professional organization of stagers. Great. Um, you know, I like to think that in, in my beginning days when I um, started in staging, I was doing a lot more support work for stagers. Um, so I like to say that, like, I help them in their mm -hmm. business um, and, and just help the industry overall. So Excellent. that's probably that's great. That's probably my unique yeah, proposition. That's great. Yeah. Experience. I think we're getting close to the end of the Perfect. show. Yeah. Um, I just wondered if I could ask you one quick question. Yeah. So what What's your favorite part about your job? Oh, it's always <laughs> installation day. <laughs> okay. It's okay. that you know whether whether someone did bite the bullet and do painting and all and, and maybe renovation that all happens before, but then there's that one day where we bring in the accessories. And everything comes together. Yeah, and it's just like by sundown that day. That's exciting. It's it's the it's it's everything you wanted. That's so that's great. my favorite Big reveal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I work with some people and, and um, one of them said to me the other day, are you ever unhappy? <laughs> and I'm like, it's staging day. Like, <laughs> it's installation day. How can I be unhappy? Everything's about to come together. That's so that's my favorite part. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Well, Kelly, thank you so much thank for joining us. This was yeah. great. Good. Really enjoyed so this. Glad to have you. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. That's of course. Always fun to talk about what I do. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll see you out there. Sounds good. <laughs>